Good afternoon. Where's everybody at? I am in my office today. I started to go out on the patio for my afternoon break and uh, it was not the business out there in Arizona. It is not the business at all. So I decided that, um, hey Kato, I decided that uh, my call today I am doing from the comfort and the coziness of the queendom. So hey Matthew, hey Keith, Tavana in the house. Um, you guys, I'm telling you, I don't know what I don't know what comes over me sometimes. Like I just have these random thoughts. Like I'll be working on something completely different, and then certain random thoughts just pop into my head. And that's kind of what happened with this whole um, love is an investment thing. So um, I see everybody's joining in. Hey Keith, how are you? Um, I see everybody's everybody's jumping in. So. Just a couple um, housekeeping items before I really um, dive into the content today of love is an investment and how I arrived at that topic. Um, and like I said, I'm going to try and keep, um, yeah, ADHD, Tavana, you already know. Like, you should see my desk right now. It, it just doesn't even make sense. It does not even make sense. But um, it's all for a purpose, right? It's for a purpose. It's about the mission. So I'm going to get there. I just have to take some detours sometime. So a couple housekeeping um, items uh, before I dive right in. I know that most of you guys that are on here are familiar with me, but there's also some people who are not familiar with me. And um, so I wanted to just share a little bit about who I am. So Marcy Batiste, I'm an author and I'm a speaker um, and I'm a domestic violence champion. And so what is a domestic violence champion? That is someone who has been through it, lived through it, and then came out the other side, did their work, is happy, healthy, healed, and whole, and ready to pay it forward. And so that's what I love the most. Like, that's that's where my heart is. That's, that's the driver in everything I do is to um, share my story, bring awareness to domestic violence. Um, so I hope that um, you all will get some benefit from today's content. Um, I would like for you to share it out, share the video out. Um, I hope that I have it on a public format so that it can be shared. And those of you who know me know my technology issues. And so I don't know how to go back now and check that. And I forgot to confirm that before I went live. So charge it to the head and not the heart in this instance. Um, I will promise I will do better the next time. Champion in many ways. You'll always say that. Thanks, Kato. Um, so the topic, love is an investment. If you wouldn't trust them with your money, why do you trust them with your heart? And so this came about because, so you all know that I just finished, I released Love Miscarriage back in March. And right now, thank you for sharing that, Keith. Um, I re released Love Miscarriage back in March, um, which was totally a labor of love. Um, I'm in love with the project. I'm in love with the characters. I'm in love with the story. And honestly, Jenna is me. Like 100% Jenna is me. So I'm very proud of that project. But this came up because I'm working on my next book. It's called um, Surviving the Rain to Find the Rainbow. And it's um, Five Steps to Domestic Violence Recovery. And so you're like, well, how does love... Love miscarriage, domestic violence, like how does that all fit together? And you kind of have to be, I think Tavana commented on here a little bit ago, um, ADHD. So I'm sort of all over the place, but in in my head, as she always says, it all makes sense. And so this is this is how this content came up while I'm writing a book on domestic violence, because the fifth step in um, surviving the rain to find the rainbow is discovering your new normal. And part of a new normal because all of us, honestly, we're put here to love. We're put here to be in relationships. Um, you know, we can debate all day and all night about the values of monogamy and so forth, but I'm not going to go there. That's not what this is about. But part of the new normal is how to love and trust again. And so I got to thinking about that. And I was thinking about some of the words that we use. And, and you know, I'm a big, I'm a big um, stickler for choosing your words carefully because of the impact that they have on the universe, right? 
And I'm also a big stickler for making sure that when I'm writing a book, um, that the content, that we're speaking the same language. So if I say something, um, no matter what word I use, I want you to understand in what context I mean it in because I also play off of words a lot. So love is an investment, love miscarriage, those types of things. There are plays on these words. You have to go to work, but you'll finish watching later. Thanks, Kato. Have a good day at work. Um, check out the website. The video will be available on my website, marcybatiste.com, so you can check it out later. Um, and then obviously it'll be on Facebook. But anyway, so back to what I was saying. So um, big stickler for making sure that we're speaking the same language, making sure that um, my message is being received how it's intended. So I always start with, you know, some clarity on what does it mean? What does it look like? So I came to love as an investment while I was working on surviving the rain because of the whole new normal piece. And so before we get into this, to that point, I want to make sure that we're speaking the same language. So one of the things that I want to do is share with you the um, definition, two definitions. One is investing and the other definition, hey Care Bear, the other definition is investment. Okay, so I want to share investing and I want to share investment. So the definition of investing, and I'm going to read these because I don't want to, I don't want to misstate them. Um, is to provide or endow someone or something with X. So whether you're endowing them with a feeling or your time or your energy, your space, whatever, right? Gigi says hi. Oh, my niecey poo. Um, so that's investing. To provide, to provide or endow someone or something with X. Okay, so we're talking about love. We're talking about relationships. So what can I endow in a relationship? I can endow time. I can endow energy. I can endow my space, those types of things. So when you hear me say investing, that's in this context, that's what I'm using it as. And then the second word is investment. So that is the action or processing, the action or process of investing for, for profit or material result. So I'm going to read that again because I was all over the place with it. Um, so investment is the action or process of investing, which we just talked about that, for profit or material result. So in this instance, what is the material result we're looking for? We're looking for love, right? So that is how love is an investment. Are we tracking? Give me some hearts if y'all if y'all get that. So love is an investment because love is the action and that is the material result that we're trying to get from the the actions of investing, which is giving our time, giving our attention, giving our energy, sharing our space, the whole nine yards. So love is an investment. So that's where we're at, right? So then I was thinking about, like, what does that mean exactly? Because we're real picky about, for me, I come from a banking background, 30 years in leadership, 30 years in management, executive leadership, um, and that's what I do now. Um, I coach personal leadership development because everything is about leadership, right? So I was thinking from a banking standpoint and a banking background and part of my bankable success platform is how, how so much, like I say, I grew up in a bank lobby because when I started um, in banking, I was 18 and just turned 18. And so I spent my whole career in that industry. So I grew up with that. So for me, everything kind of foots back mentally to the lessons that I learned in the bank lobby. What, what, what bankable success strategies did I learn that took me from a switchboard operator to executive management, right? And so obviously in banking, one of the big things you talk about is investing in investments. So love is an investment. I think we can agree on that. We're investing our time, our energy, our space, and the outcome we want in return is love. So there's our love investment. But we don't like we we're so we're quick to say no to a lot of things. And so um, I'm looking at residual incomes and different income streams, and I was thinking for like take a, a multi-level marketing company for example. People are this quick to say no. Oh, I'm not giving my money for that. 
Oh no, 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 no. You're not gonna you're not gonna get me. That seems like a scam scam. This seems like tell me more. And so they're real quick, we're real quick to be like, no, when it comes to money, right? So you can be like, if I went to you and I said, Hey, I'm starting this new company and I want you to come in on it, the first thing you're gonna ask me is how much does it cost? How much does it cost for me to get into that? So I used to sell isogenics, right? Biggest, quick, first thing out of somebody's mouth when you tell them that, you, that you're part of a, a, a health and wellness company. Well, how much does it cost? Relationships, we don't ask that question. When was the last time you asked, how much is this relationship? How much is this investment of my time, my energy, my space, my life, my soul, my spirit, how much is this going to cost me? We don't ask that question when it comes to relationships. But love is love is an investment. But we'll just we'll throw we'll throw that. Let me throw you my time. Let me throw you my attention. Let me throw you my energy. In my case, it was like, let me throw you my self-esteem. Here, take all of it if you'd like. So we just don't um we don't um why is my phone always ringing on one of these? We don't we don't make the same, we don't ask the same questions when we're talking about Okay, I'm back. So of course the phone rings in the middle of a of a pivotal point. Um, but we don't ask those, so we don't ask the same questions. I'll give you my heart, my soul, my spirit, my being, everything that's in me, and I'm not. I don't ever ask what's it gonna cost. That's not a question that comes out of my mind. So if I'm surviving the rain to find the rainbow, and I need to develop a new normal, my new normal has to include new questions, new procedures, new policies for myself and those around me. Right. And so, again, if you wouldn't trust them with your money, why would I trust you with my heart? But we don't ask that question. Like one of the one of the, I was thinking about buying a buying a car again. What's it going to cost me? How much is it? Well, I don't know where that thing's been. Let's talk about relationships. I'm in my 40s. I do not know where that thing has been. OK. We don't ask the questions. We don't ask the questions. And, and you know, that's just real. We don't. So if it, if it looks good, seem like it runs okay, let me take it for a spin, right? But if it was a used car, you better trust and believe before I make that invest, before I invest my money in that used car, I'm going to check my car facts. But we don't ever check our love facts. So I was like, what's, what's on a car facts? What's a car facts tell you? And let's see, does this, does this all fit together? Great question, right, Tamana? Right? Okay, so where's that thing been? So if I'm going to check a car facts, what do I want to find out if I'm checking the car facts? I want to know how many other owners it's had. And y'all take this as far right or as far left as you want to go. I'm going to stay on topic, but y'all all know what I'm talking about because we're grown, Right? So love, relationships, sex, let's be real about it. Let's be real about it because until we can't heal what we refuse to speak on, we can't. So we out here giving things away and not understanding what the cost is in the long run to our, our financial health, our physical health, our mental health, our well-being, our self-esteem. We're not asking these questions. But if I want if 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 somebody told me, "Hey Mars, I want to sell you this used car and it's going to cost you $3,000." The only thing I'm going to ask is, "Do I have $3,000?" But I'm going to look at the car. "Hey, send me a picture." Okay, we do that with relationships nowadays with thanks to social media, right? Send me a picture. "Oh, let me go check out your profile." Let me see what you're talking about, right? Check the car facts. Check your love facts. Check your love facts. So the car facts is going to tell you who, who, who's who been there, right? Where's the car been? What kind of conditions was it in? What city did it, did it originate from? It's going to tell you um, what it's been through. So it's got a car fax is going to have a history of repairs, right? So if this, that, or the other thing was broken, the Carfax is going to tell you that. People don't come with a love fax. 
they're not going to tell you that. And we're not even asking the question. Like we're not even asking the intelligent questions to even get to the information. Never mind the fact that they're not going to volunteer it. But you you're not even asking the question. We're not even asking the question. So how do you how do you expect to find those answers out? So if love is an investment, I'm investing my time, energy, heart, soul, spirit, mind, body, everything I got, I'm about to give to you, but I'm not even going to ask what the cost is. That's crazy. That's crazy. So if we're going to develop a new normal, it doesn't matter if I've survived the rain. It doesn't matter if I can see the rainbow. If when I create the new normal, I still do the same things that I did when I was standing in the rain. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So back to the Carfax again. What else the Carfax tell you? It's going to tell you, uh, ah, a Carfax is going to tell you, uh, is there a salvage title? In a relationship, don't you want to know if there's permanent damage? Don't you want to know if the person that you're about to give your heart, your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit, your everything to is permanently damaged? But we don't ask that question. Like, and I'm thinking of myself. This is a no judgment zone. I'm going to be real with you. I've never asked that question. But you better trust and believe that once I take it out for a few spins, you start to see what's broken. It becomes clear. Like, oh, yep, mm-hmm, I could, yep, yeah, mm, yep, if I asked the question, I probably could have, I probably could have saw that coming, but we didn't ask the question, we didn't check our love facts, love is, love is the biggest investment you will ever make, love is, is giving, giving something that, you know, people say time is your greatest investment, but with love, you're not only giving your time, you're giving your soul. And I saw a meme the other day that talked about, um, I can't remember exactly what it said, but it says something to the effect of if you, if you've ever tried to break something, try breaking a soul tie. Okay. And for those of you who, who know what soul ties are, you understand that that's a powerful powerful attractor and so in the world in the domestic violence arena you know a lot of times it's those soul ties that that keep women going back that keep keep them held in that bondage that makes them on top of everything else afraid to leave right and so again this all comes up because I'm writing a book about domestic violence but domestic violence doesn't happen without love and toxicity and not understanding what love is they're not clear on their terms they're not clear on what they're making an investment in so i'm investing my time my energy my body my heart my mind my soul my spirit my house my 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 family like everything you have you giving to someone you're giving that to someone and then i was thinking at love miscarriage book club last week or the week before how I define love, right? And one of my biggest definers for love is it has to be an add to, not a detract from. But we don't ask the right questions. Sometimes we don't even ask the questions at all. Sometimes we don't even know what we're looking for. But I bet you if, you want, if, I, if I wanted you to buy a used car, you'd ask some questions. I bet you if I told you, hey, I want you to come on board and sell Isogenics with me. Hey, I want you to come on board and sell Avon. Hey, I want you to come sell Mary Kay. Hey, come do Organic Go with me. Hey, come. I could list off 50 different multi-level marketing companies that if I presented you with that opportunity, no matter how good the opportunity looked on paper, you would have questions. Right? But I could take you to a website that says swipe right or swipe left. And that's enough for you to decide, oh, hey, I want to explore a relationship with this person. Come on now. Come on now. Are y'all are y'all tracking with me? Like, does, is this making sense? Your Carfax tells you at the bottom of the Carfax, it says, bottom line, this is the current value. 
Bottom line, this is the current value. Your love facts doesn't tell you what the current value is. And if you're not asking the questions, if you are not clear about what you are investing in, then your return on investment is not ever going to be what you had hoped it was going to be. And yeah, so I'm looking yeah. at like, let's take like a bank statement or something, for example. Thank you for sharing, Tavana. Take a bank statement, for example. When you, um, like a 401k statement, anything. So you've put your money in to this, to this bank and... You have, they've told you we're going to pay you X, Y, Z amount of interest. These are the fees that are associated with the account. And if you do this, 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 and this, then you can earn X, Y, or Z. Okay? Well, love is the same way. So I've put in, um, I haven't been real clear about my terms and conditions. So I'm going to hope that everything pans out and at the end, of the road that there's a pot of gold well no there's not a pot of gold it's a puddle of mud um i fell and bumped my head a few times on the way the journey wasn't what i thought it was going to be my shoes are messed up i ain't got clothes on my back now because this just went all the way wrong because i didn't ask the right questions because i didn't know what i was investing in but if you go back to the bank statement and look at that as an investment it's all laid out for you you can see what was added and what was subtracted throughout the month. And at the end of the bank statement, it tells you what? What is your remaining balance? What's left? What is the current value of this account? But we don't do that with relationships. We don't do that. And I'm going to say we because historically, I can write a book like Love Miscarriage because I've messed stuff up a whole lot more times than I've gotten it right. So this is not this is not judgment. This is this is really just one of those seriously it's an aha kind of thing and let me share this. I don't want you to have to wait till the book is done in a few months. I want you to know this information now because every single day people are out there engaging in relationships, investing in relationships and expecting a certain return on their investment and getting nothing in return and then being pissed off about it. I talk I I talk about Personal leadership development, personal leadership. I'm going to lead me first. So don't be mad that you didn't get the return on your investment that you thought you should. If you didn't ask the right questions to begin with, if you weren't clear, if you didn't do your homework, if you didn't check your love facts, don't be mad that the bottom line, the value isn't what you thought it should be. It's not the bank's job to balance my books. It's my job. It's not your partner's job to balance the books in the relationship. It's your job just as much as it is their job. Their job is to make sure that their investment is protected, that they're getting the return that they want. Your job is to make sure that you get the return that you want. But communication on the front side says, let me lay out the terms and conditions so that as we explore this journey together, at the end of the road, we still got our shoes, clothes on our back, a roof over our head, food on the table, and we're happy. We both got what we wanted out of this, but we're not having those conversations. So if you're going to develop a new normal, it doesn't matter if you survive the rain or it doesn't matter if you find the rainbow. If you don't develop the new normal and create new habits, you're going to end up with the same crappy results. I can heal you from a love miscarriage, right? But if you didn't learn anything from it, the likelihood of you having another one, pretty damn good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Almost guaranteed. And then I was thinking about the conversations that we have when things aren't going right in relationships. And we say things like, oh, you don't love me like you used to. Well, dang, I hope not. I don't want it to stay the same. You shouldn't want it to stay the same. Yeah, that initial investment is what made you sign on the dotted line. But don't you want that investment to grow? I never. And so, like I, like I say, the words you use will direct the life that you choose. So if I'm telling you and I'm putting into the universe, I want things to stay the same. That means it's never going to grow. But if I change in the process, that stays the same. Then you see that there's a gap. You got to somehow make up for that. It doesn't, this doesn't just happen like happy relationships. When people say relationships are work, 
That's why I'm single. I don't know if I want to put in the work. But I tell you what, I will darn sure make sure I check my love facts on the go forward. I'm going to not be afraid to ask the questions. I'm going to be clear on what is my investment. What am I investing in? I'm going to be clear on what I want and what I expect and what I need my return on that investment to be. I'm not going to just leave it up to my partner to figure it out. Because historically speaking, when I go back and I look at my records, they ain't figured it out yet. But in the eye of personal leadership development, that's not their fault. That's mine. That's mine. I'm in charge of my happiness. I'm in charge of my wholeness. I'm in charge of my completeness. I'm in charge of the balance in my books. I choose what I spend money on. I choose what I invest money in. I, I choose what I spend time on, what I invest time on.